made it to the book of Numbers, and what we find is a God who counts things. The Psalms tell us that God counts the stars and has a name for each one. Matthew tells us that he knows the numbers of hair on our heads. But here in chapter 1, he is doing much more than numbering the people. He's organizing them into 12 tribes. He's appointing leaders and a chain of command. He's numbering eligible soldiers, but most importantly, God is giving these wandering men purpose and a responsibility as protectors of a nation. The total comes to 603,550 men eligible for battle. But the chapter takes an interesting turn at the end. God says that the tribe of Levi was not to be counted. Now, as a worship leader, the tribe of Levi has a lot of symbolism to me about how I lead and speak into my worship team. Because the Levites were the musicians, the worship leaders, the singers, the priests and caretakers of the tabernacle. And here's the thing, it wasn't because they were pale, wimpy musicians. If you know anything about Levi, he was a warrior. In Genesis 34, he and his brother Simeon destroyed a whole city by themselves to rescue their sister. No, the Levites had a higher calling to protect the tabernacle, to guard the Ark of the Covenant, to lead the people in worship and song, and later, in times when the numbers weren't in their favor, the Levites would lead the men into battle singing and God would bring the victory. Numbers 1 is teaching us an important lesson. There are things on earth that can and should be counted, but the things that are God's His power, His mercy, His grace, His wrath, His righteousness, His love and blessings. No, the things of God cannot be counted, measured, or numbered.